something you can just make up for yourself you have to you have to be able to show that you are as strong as you say you are you have if, especially if you're competing in strongman check check good mic check mic check <clears throat> one two one two see i'm like a rapper you're exactly like a rapper. i'm like a little dicky you definitely little dicky yeah I, I like that guy something 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 yes little dicky yes <laughs> yeah. all right here we are episode six. well that, that camera's tight is that that's good right it's better i like tight all right thanks Goodness gracious. All right, here we are. Episode 68 here, Strong and Petty in the Iron Age gym, we're, west end of Winnipeg. We're tight. We are uh, a tight group here. We're here um, on uh, the, middle, the middle of a week here, a beautiful, the end of a, a brutal, scorching heat wave here in uh, Manitoba. Just rolling into another one. Next and and about to have another one, yeah. So disgusting. Well, because we both don't have AC in our gyms. No AC in the gym, baby. This is this so, is a hardcore gym. <laughs> yeah. This is where we, a hardcore guy is We force trained. weight loss. Yeah, we don't. We don't. <laughs> Clearly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Weight loss is a key component of our of our our program here at Iron Age. I actually had a member two weeks ago. A new a new member girl. So, and so she, why are you so fast? And she no yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, uh, hey, like, uh, when do you guys turn on the AC in here? Oh, good question. And I'm like, we don't. <laughs> what? I'm like, what a fun question. There is no AC here. What do you mean? I'm like, ah, we don't make enough money. <laughs> I was just like, ah, we don't have enough members. See those two big overhead doors? There's your yeah. AC unit. That's, yeah. That's how we condition the air. In here. Yeah. I'm like, if uh, if you're willing to pay an extra five bucks a month, I remember yeah. I could get AC in here, but uh, I, I don't even know what my options would be to get the AC in here because it's not my fucking building, right? So I don't. You would have to pay for a split. Yeah, I'm not about to do that. And then uh, pull back up when you're done. I'd much rather just pretend that we're hardcore for not having AC than pay yeah. for all that. Or you just for sure. you could put a portable and open your overhead doors in the day the, and put a, a slit in the bottom, and then you just vent outside. Oh my god, but that would be this gym's too big for that. Oh man. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm not going to do it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, you got <laughs> all of our Irish members just razz Tyler to get like <laughs> three portable ACs running. We have, we have very, through the roof. We have very poor uh, insulation in this building, so we eat shit in yeah, the, the winter time. And, yeah. yeah, we eat shit in the winter time. So this is our time to to recuperate our losses a little bit by not paying for. AC. That's literally me and deal. Like our hydro yeah. bills in winter because the house and shop, our yeah. house and our gym are on the same yard. Yeah, and my hydro bills in January, usually January, February, March, hit just shy two thousand dollars a month. Yeah, so and I'm like. No, I don't want to pay hydro bills. No, and then I have a pool in the summer, it. which heats, so that it's. But we were, we were, uh, we. I came out there last uh, Sunday. Yeah. And I had some of my my dear friends from Winkler join me out there, which was nice. And Martin yep. came out. Um, Martin, what a sweetheart. Yeah, we, uh, we like I I didn't. It, it was very very hot outside, but I didn't notice it as bad in your gym because the two. It's just like being outside, you know. It what creates I mean? a like, wind tunnel. Yeah, it's actually yeah. it's actually really not that bad. Yeah. And uh, we went out there and we practiced some of the the provincials implements. We got. Uh, Carter and Aaron and Martin got their hands on the uh, and also Denzel, our, our producer, came out and just the fuck yeah. Out try he's it, like, I is... need to do something with the and and Betty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and strong and Betty. I mean, yeah. So he uh, he came out and we did some of the Conan's wheel. We did some Viking press and uh, honestly, those are those are those kind of implements where it's like just getting your hands on it once or twice makes a really huge difference in your performance. Yeah. Um, like they like the people who get out there and uh, and uh, what's today Saturday. Will, will be Saturday when this comes out. Yeah. So we're 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 on our way out there right now to the Nathan Payton seminar, and uh, following that. So if you hear this in time, and you weren't planning on coming out to uh, Nathan Payton seminar, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, we will be doing some some implement training afterwards. So if you yeah. if you have time, come hang out. Like it's it's really. Um, uh, I'm watching people like some some of the guys have been coming into my gym to pop in, do some of the equipment too from other gyms around the around the city, and. Uh, uh, very unprepared for some of the events. I'm just gonna yeah. say. It. I'm just gonna say it because because yep. I, I think a lot of people are thinking that that um, it's about being strong and it is about being strong, but it's about being strong and being practiced with the implements and having the technique and stuff. Yeah. And one one uh, event, I'll, I'll I'll give this this is my my experienced uh, uh, prediction on the uh, the competition. Yeah. My experienced competitor prediction is that the people who do really well on the on the sandbag are going to do really well overall yeah. because a lot of people are going to fucking bomb on that the sandbag to shoulder and the weights are appropriate yeah, yeah. sandbag to shoulder the weights yeah. are appropriate 
Um, but the technique is not there for some guys, and they just don't know. They just have. Well, we're going to they... work on that on Saturday a bit. Sure, we can do that too. Yep. I don't know what. To... Yeah, I got the Cornish wheel set up. I got the Viking set up. Uh, I bolted together the big dog frame, which is too big for most of the, the woman, people. obviously, and yeah. even the lower guys. Most and the guys, good thing yeah. we did that yesterday because Brian's over. I was like, "Hey, you got time?" I walk outside. He's in the middle of bolting shit together in my yard. I'm like, "Hey," and he's got the wrong uh, cross members. He's got the ones that I built for my frames. Oh, I see. Good thing he did that because I realized, I'm like, "Holy shit!" When when we did Matt Strong's man the year we did frames, we only had men. Right, yeah, so yeah. I yeah. have never built the apparatuses for the lighter one for the women's right, frames. Right. Last night I came, I'm like, holy shit! I've got like, luckily we still got two weeks, but I got to now get some my beams drilled out. We could we could use that uh, like that the frame thing that you have like the like the rickshaw. One. Yeah, yeah. You drop it at tip so. Oh. That's fine. They needed to be made anyways. I just forgot that I never made them. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I'm gonna just go. And I gotta get some IBs. Hey, well, made thanks, Brian, up. for helping us yeah, out with that. Because yeah, he, he never continue, never ceases to help the Manitoba strongman scene. That Brian, <laughs> I tell you. Oh. So I'm actually I'm gonna do some frame. I was actually he put the frame together, and I was like, you know what? I wonder if I still got it. If I could still move this thing. Um. So we'll try. We'll try. I think I'm gonna. Did you? You didn't try the big dog one yet? No, I will. He's training it tonight. I think. Um. I don't know if he's. I got Bible study tonight, so I don't know if he'll be there by the time I get there or by the time I leave, but. This weekend I might. Clint's coming out. Like a bunch of guys are coming out. Yeah. Um, Will is even texting me. Will is like, hey, wow, uh, wow, blast from the after. past. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, anybody who wants to come out Saturday, like, at the, if you're there for the seminar, stick around for training. Yeah, just stick around. Yeah, I mean, you absolutely. got your athletes there. I got my athletes that pay yeah. me, but I mean, I'll be there. And if you want to learn some Viking shit, lad? Why not? Yeah, I mean, you're already like paying for the seminar, you, so you you don't have to be uh, either one of our athletes. Like we're trying to help the the competitors who are doing provincials. So yeah. feel, don't feel like you're like, oh, I'm not one of their guys, so I can't. Like I don't like you, but I'll help you. Like I'll definitely sabotage you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do that to my own athletes. Yeah, absolutely. So don't expect any. Yeah, if I give you any advice, treatment. do the opposite because I, I'm not trying to help you, but I <laughs> but I want everyone to come out and hang out. Yeah. Um. So that's what, yeah. That's we're we're looking at the Nathan Payton seminar this Saturday, which we're really excited about. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. I know you've been in contact with Nathan, yeah. and he's been in a, a horrible Florida heat. No, well, he's California, right? California, sorry. And he just got shit kicked with a hurricane. Yeah, that's what. Okay, I thought it was Florida. Okay. Yeah, yeah so yeah. I, I met some. I wanted you know I wanted to wine and dine, but he's, yeah, I'm excited. You know, then I'll take up for supper stuff. It's like man, I know he just got power. He had been posting on on Instagram, so it's not private info. Um, you know, I don't want to get people slapped for that again. <laughs> and, uh, seems to be. Put no people's fucking yeah. private info in. So yeah, I'll, I'll, give, you, I'll give you his all. address, I guess. <laughs> uh, no, so I know he got nailed with a hurricane, which is, thank goodness, he's all right. Yeah. So he had no power for a week and 100 degree heat. Unbelievable. Um, so he's just getting that back. So he's flying. He's like, you know what? I'm just probably going to prep the seminar and get some rest. I'm like, I understand. It sucks. Yeah. So I was like, ah, you know, I can get some one on one time or just hang out with him and pick his brain a bit. Or... beards and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, really I actually weird. had this thing braided yesterday. Really? Well, because I, I wanted to front squat. But it, it rips up my hair if uh, I can't get if I can't get my beard get over really, the bar. Really get it up there. So I braided it last night, and uh, yeah, the, the woman in my gym, man, just moist. <laughs> oh God! They they see the braid because of the heat. Because of this, <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with you, Devin. I promise you. I, <laughs> I can promise you. Nothing to do with the you. humidity in training ground just with this thing braided. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness. One hundred and three percent. Goodness gracious. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we're looking we're looking forward to getting that one going. That's good. it's going to be a really good experience. Um, we're uh, I I want to see I, we're actually getting a really good sign up from competitors. Yes, I want to say we. I'm sorry, I say I keep saying we because me and Devin are, are partners for life here yeah. in the strongman thing. But it's his event and it's his it's his seminar he's putting on. But we as a as a group are seeing a good sign up from competitors. I'm really happy about that. I want to see more of these coaches signing up. Yeah. Uh, and I and I I don't mind telling you that because. When competitors can't make it, when competitors are like, "Hey, you know, it's the middle of the season," we we there's a lot of money to be spent on strongman. Yeah, and I never pretend that there's not. Um, but it's the middle of the season. Hey, we you know like we had a competition last weekend. We have a competition next weekend. We yeah. want to do something this weekend. I I understand that. That's really not a problem. Yeah, and I really don't hold that against anybody. I don't hold it against competitors who can't, and especially when I'm talking about we're talking about like a nutrition seminar. Yeah, where it's really more geared towards the people who are teaching other people. I think. Yeah. Uh, or you know, and obviously there's nothing wrong with like educating yourself on the subject and being more being more knowledgeable about it. But I really think that this is that this is one that. If you're a coach and not coming, I, I, I'll be blunt with you. I am holding that against you. Yeah. I, I think that you are um, showing that you don't care as much about this as you as you pretend to. Um, when there's these opportunities, like say Lucas Hatton, like there was, it was all, it was you, me. Was there anybody else there who coached any? Uh, right, Ryan Fraze came. Right, because so, he coached so, some guys over sure. the gym. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I mean, you coach Ryan, I coach Ariel. Yeah. So it's um, but it, and it's and it's but it's people who who. Um, like we're we're not seeing these people who claim to be coaches of strongman 
or who likes to be coaches or, or, in general. Just in because, general. Like, it's, yeah. it's a nutrition fucking Yeah, because Lucas Hatton was more geared, was obviously all geared to straw men. But, uh, but I'll also say. But he did go through some. Olympic lifting stuff in That's a sense, right. the way he the push pressing and different things. And and if you if you bring in, um, I'm tr- I'm trying to think of a like a really like a, if you brought in like a fucking John Hack or something. Yeah, you're going to that, and I'm going to that, and we're not yeah. powerlifters. No, if, that I came to Lucas, and, and 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 I always feel a little insecure going to seminars. I really do. And I've never said that to anybody, but because my athletes are there. Wiener. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> my dick looks so small in their hands. <laughs> Lucas will pull your little yeah, wiener. he just grabs it and it looks like an extra pinky. <laughs> when three, did he get six fingers? Seven, 375 right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Going to get the strongest yeah, man. I think we look so average in his hand. Holy fuck. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think being that being that way, that body weight is probably doing anything for his wiener either. No, no. The, what do they say? Every 30 pounds, you lose, you gain an inch? Well, luckily, he is a huge hog. So he's so. probably pissing on his own pointer finger. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I like I go to these things. And my own athletes are there, and I go there because I want to learn. Right. But but the, the the thing I find with that is I go to learn. My athletes are learning everything I'm missing too. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like Devin, why didn't you teach this? I'm like, because I didn't know that. We're fucking learning. Yeah. We're all learning so together. So it's it's, it's, it's kind of it's cool. But I always like, ah, oh, shit. I need. To, I wish I knew this stuff. But it, but the, the the thing is, is what you have to remember is that for a lot of strongman stuff. Like this learning curve only started like a few years ago. Yeah. Like, but, but but to to the point, like in the, you know, in the relative scheme of things, yeah. To the point where there'd be people who are like experts in this subject. There's been Olympic lifting for a hundred years. There's been yeah. powerlifting since the fucking sixties. There's been this has been a very uh, a relatively new uh, thing that now there's people who are like real brains are applying their knowledge and their expertise to this, and we all have lots to learn from these people. Well, we were just talking before the podcast, me, you, and Dan, about how like. Conjugate used to be, if the strongest guys in the world did conjugate. Right. That's the way it was in the, I would say, 90s and 80s. You know, whenever, when, 90s, when Louis Simmons, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was all conjugate, conjugate. A lot of those numbers have all been beat now by different mes- methodologies, in, incorporating some conjugate. But guys who st- strictly stick to that aren't the best in the world anymore, no. or quite often. Like, because no. things progress. Things change. And, and just like Louis Simmons changed the world with his, with his coaching and right. what he learned, right. people have took that now and yeah. progressed it yeah. further. Yeah. yeah. And you look guys like like Shane German and, and and Lucas Hatton and stuff, and these are guys where it's like if you're if you're trying to be on the cutting edge of what people are talking about with strongman stuff, it's like those are the kind of guys you want to be following because they're um, they're taking things like 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 Lucas was a guy. We're getting a little far from what we're talking about, but Lucas was a guy where it's like uh, you said a lot of Olympic lifting, uh, a lot of a lot of sprinting, a lot of track stuff mixed it mixed into his. He said he did Olympic lifting for how many years? Uh, he, he did a bunch of yeah, training yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah. And even he came here, he's like, I wouldn't coach you how to limp lift because I'm not a pro in it. Right. Like, oh, that's pretty humble. Yeah. Like, that's pretty cool because yeah. you could tell he knew what he was doing. Right. It's just, it's, it's, yeah. it's, uh, these, there's, there's so much to be taken from everything else. So, anyway, the, the roundabout way of what I'm yeah. saying there is that if, if somebody came in with, like, if fucking, uh, one of, like, if, uh, Lu Zhao Zhen came in from the, the Olympic lifting stuff and came in, I would go to that seminar. Yeah. Uh, I might not lift because I have nothing to, I, I would be just slowing things down too much, but I, but I, but I would go and <laughs> be listen explosive and watch. in I, the washroom. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I went, I went and watched, um, um, Anna's, uh, Olympic lifting session. With Terry Hadlow. Oh yeah. And if you're not familiar with Terry Hadlow, he's a very high level Olympic lifting coach. Uh, stay tuned for something coming up with that. That lots of people don't realize that he's in Winnipeg yeah. and has the knowledge he has. Olympic competitor. Yeah. Um, he's a guy who's going to be. Uh, we're going to be doing something fun with him coming up. So sweet. Um, but the uh, like I I didn't go there to lift. I just went there to watch and see how he coached and just kind of yeah. take it in because and, and I immediately feels like ooh that's something kind of cool that I could start doing, and whatever. But. So if you're a guy where it's like, oh, well, I don't really do a lot of strongman uh, coaching or any strongman coaching, I still urge you to come check these things out. And now when we're talking about uh, Nathan Payton, it's not geared towards strongman. No, nope. it's just a nutrition seminar for athletes. Yeah. Um. And it, and it's and I'm sure that we're going to talk about strongman because we're all fucking doing strongman, yeah. right? But if you if you can't get anything out of that, then honestly, you're just not you're not that good of a coach. Well, and, and the, the thing is, I was wondering if I was scared because he put on there like. Uh, he's been tagging me every day in stories himself, which is a great guy. But he put on there like unrestricted Q and A. Well, and I, you know what people are saying is, obviously we're in a sport where there's a lot of extracurricular drugs being used, sure. which changes the way you use your nutrition. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm wondering if some of these coaches that aren't because I'm to be honest, like, and I'm, I'm not trying to. Yeah, I am calling some people for coaches. Like athletes, you're coming. That's awesome, man. I appreciate the support for anybody. But like, I message gyms privately. And I'm like, hey, if you have any coaches, mm-hmm. this goes goes to any sport. I even, I have some swim coaches actually that that, uh, that my partner works with, and my that, business and partner. That's a, that's a who are who are paying? Yeah. It's like we got meets that day, but I'll pay you for the video. Right. And uh, I had other guys reach out. I'm paying you. For, I'll pay you for the video, but I can't make it in or from out of town. Sweet. We got lots of coaches in town, like path coaches. 
Um, besides Thrones and you guys, not one coach has signed up. Right. Um, Manitoba Heavy, like Jason McDonald, their top lifter, he signed up. He's that coming in. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. Um, I was just, I was, I was shocked because I, th- I, I wonder if people are scared that because oh, he teaches nutrition and insulin sensitivity. Well, that's more based more geared towards steroid users and I don't want to associate with myself with steroid users. There is those people that still have that, well, God, like God that closed learn, mind. God forbid you learn things. But you know what insulin I mean? manipulation like, works in natural and right. enhanced athletes. And no one's, no one's, no one's going no to walk in and be like, all right, here's your uh, here's your stamp on your forehead that says you went to a seminar where you might talk about steroids. Yeah. And we might not. Well, I, maybe, that, maybe, that's, maybe then the MPA won't let them because <laughs> they're around... Maybe uh, that's that's not the case. That's <laughs> that's well, that would not be the case. This that's not. Give, I don't want to give any kind of leeway to the people who are just yeah, being lazy just, and just not yeah. showing up. Yeah. And that's what it is. Is that it's if if you're if you're a coach who has a se- has a seminar like this or Lucas Hatton or whoever it might be like yeah. brought to your fucking doorstep, and you just don't take advantage of it, then you're just a lazy coach. And th- and that's yeah. and that's just and then for my money, that's not somebody I would hire. Yeah. I wouldn't hire somebody who's like, well, I do have the Saturday I could go and and up my game and be more valuable to my clients, but man, I want to lift with my boys on the gym on Saturday or I got to yeah. go to fucking uh, uh I got to go like the fucking Pinawa whatever or I got to fucking go yeah. and uh, whatever the fuck it might be. Like it's just I got to go camping with my girlfriend. It's like, oh, well, then this isn't really that important to you then. I even had the guys from Classic reach out holiday. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, they got the Shonovan show. Right. Um, he's like, Devin, I want you to compete. B- bugs July, me. July 25th in Shonovan, Saskatchewan. Yeah, he bugs me every year. No, July 20th. 20th. Oh, my mistake. Sorry. Like the same day, he bugs me every year to compete. Hey, Devin, you should come out and and compete. And I'm like, man, I got a seminar the day. Nathan Payton's coming. He's like, damn it. Like he's like that. That'd be a great seminar to be at. We yeah. got this show. Um, and it, it's coaching isn't my main gig. And like the gym is your main business. That's your that's that's what you do, and 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 your passion shows in it. Um. For me, this this is only passion because it's not my business. I right. make some money from it, but I have other businesses that that supported. Honestly, the other business supported and started the whole strawman right. in the last eight years, right. and then we we joined it together. Uh, but I remember, like, even went to the Dan the Dan Green seminar. I only coached two powerlifters, but I'm like, I, I, if I can learn one thing, it's worth a hundred bucks. Cause I my real estate I paid a coach twenty five grand to learn real estate. So I'm like, I didn't go to college. And I wasn't I wasn't well versed in books. Right. I'm like, but if I can learn okay, instead you, of learning the hard could, way, you couldn't read. I'm yeah, I, I can't straighten my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I got a really good reading level. <laughs> um, but like the Lucas thing too, like I worked that morning to I even messed you. I'm like, I don't know if I could make it because right, I had a rental yeah. that was going bad. Yeah, I got there at like I left at six or five thirty in the morning with my tractor, bust some ass. I don't even know if I got to shower. Whipped here, got the early seminar because I also had a wedding immediately right, after the right, seminar. I couldn't right. even stick around and say hi. Right. But I'm like, man, and I learned a couple of things in my, and, and I've been incorporating my athletes. Yeah. And I'm like, that's worth the money to me as yeah. a coach. If I can, even though it's a hobby, I still want my athletes to do the best possible. And I always feel like I'm never giving enough. Well, you owe it to your athletes to do that. Yeah. Because they, because whether or not this is your number one thing, your number two yeah. thing, your number three thing, is that they, to them, this is this could very well be their number one. Well, thing. and the nice thing is like Gordon Johnson came i coached them yes. uh clint came actually a lot of mathies came yeah um uh, and, 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 we and we had a great show and gordon joss and are going to be people who in the next couple of years will probably be coaches themselves sure i'll probably can my ass um, <laughs> so i'm glad because i've sent gord some of my books i've paid for so i can read um some of my courses yeah. like different your, things, your audio books yeah because yeah. he's a guy even though i coach him he wants to know why i'm doing the things i'm doing for sure and which is great because yeah. if he starts coaching and he's got good knowledge and sport already, we'll have more coaches in the province. Right. Um, well, that's and that's the thing. Too, what would be nice too is that and he'll they, appeal to the fifty plus. The, yeah. <laughs> the well, geriatrics. We, well, we have a very they they live in a different area than both you and me, so mm-hmm. they're going to be pulling in people who maybe don't know about the sport. Maybe you know the, the more that we can make the, when the, he's got an outreach that we're not touching. Right. Um. In terms of the demographics and like where he so if he can pull in three, four, five, ten kids from sure. the Tinder Bullshit that don't even sure. know about straw men. That's a whole nother and that's and that's to what we're saying though is that like and then we we want to make sure that we want more coaches. That's the thing. I, I I have no problem with there being more people teaching strongman, but the last thing that we want is people teaching it poorly. When I would like to get to the point where we have so many coaches, not so many that we're losing money, but enough coaches, enough athletes that we're I, to that be clear, we're, I don't want that. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't want so many coaches. No, that's that but I mean money. like I would like to the point where we have enough athletes. That we have to cap our shows. Like we can sustain, yeah. Absolutely. No, like cap them. Okay, we yeah. only have this many, right, in the, yeah, yeah. like or cap yeah. divisions. You have to do Vita or Tolstoy kind of deal. Yeah, yeah or yeah. you know, like you're, yeah. you're gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to, and it's like, and, and it'll make it more competitive. It'll yeah. make the passion stronger. Sure. Um, you know, I, I'd like to see that. Yeah, that would be lovely. Um, so these seminars, and we're we're on our way because I wanna I wanna do a count at the end of this, um, at the end of the season because, uh, save for Manitoba strongest man and woman, we had more competitors on all of our competitions than we did last year. 
and, and totally different ones too. And provincials, and yeah, and we and we saw more people. We saw more new people. I think this year than last year. Even. Yep. And we saw a lot of new people last year. Yeah. So I, I want what I want to do is I want to sit and kind of do some. How many active people you figure we got? It's got to be fifty. I was going to say, are you think we're up to sixty? Because there's a bunch competing yeah. at at Winkler. Well, let's say or... we had we had we had forty at we had forty something at Tolstoy. Yeah. Where we had me and Dan can't compete in that. Yeah, so and then there was Jocelyn didn't make it. Jocelyn. Uh, oh, we're gonna. That's not I do let's, the name. Let's thing. not do names. But it's, it's, Freaking miss shit again. We're gonna get. Yeah. We're gonna get bull, but we're I, get I, I wonder if we've got sixty to seventy active competitors I, I, in the I province. Think that's probably reasonable to which, say that. Yeah. Which when me and you were competing back in the day, we had fifteen active. We also have Lane hanging out too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you little, he didn't even for my loaf of milk comment. Really? Yeah, I thought for sure he'd beak me or something. Well, he's just getting lazy. I don't know what's wrong with that kid. He's getting tired in his yeah. old age here. Uh, um, he's, the, he's he's my favorite athlete that I have like north west of the number one. There you go. Yeah, that's a, that's a very high praise. High praise there coming from Devin Penner. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's about yeah. So we so Nathan, Nathan Payton this weekend. We're very much looking forward to that. Looking forward to meeting guy. Looking for I'm looking forward to that. Just kind of getting stories about. I think I bet you there's some really interesting stuff about working with a guy. Some of the guys that he's worked with. Well, You're talking about some of the biggest men on earth and trying to beat yeah, them. I think it's gonna I, be really I, interesting I'd like to stories. see how he changes things because you'll see guys come out. And, and not do well in an event. You can tell they're also a little grug. In the next event, they yeah, look they like they've livened it up. And I'm wondering, it, yeah. like, what, like, there's mindset, but what changed? Because I know sure. he follows, he he monitors glycogen levels during every event. Mm-hmm. I was I was listening to talk about that and how this is the perfect glycogen level, and then I know they're ready for that event. Like, and right. he monitors that at the whole comp. But now that's above our level. Yeah, like, dude's, uh, yeah, that's dude's awesome. got the. Deg- I have no interest in doing nutrition. You, you you're also refing a competition. I'm emptying yeah. the competition. <laughs> uh, like, it's, there's not. I, exactly- I, I don't even have that. Might be an interest. I don't know if you're planning on getting nutrition coaching one day. I did actually for a little while. Yeah, yeah, I, and I and I liked it, but I just it was just a, a money issue more than anything else. I have no int. I I did, used to do some diets. I did some some. I've done some research, read some books, did some things. I have no interest in it. There's read too some much, books, did some things. Yeah, <laughs> there's there's too much emotion involved in uh, diet coaching that I just don't have time for. Oh, the coaching aspect yeah. of it. Oh, yeah. sorry, you're saying me doing coaching? Yeah. Oh, fuck no. Yeah, like that. No, like, I have no interest in for that. For me, I'm doing this seminar because I wanted to learn so I can just give my athletes a tidbit of advice right. to help them just do a little better on game that, day. That's and if I, they make it to a high level like where you're at as a pro, you and Dan, then go hire Nathan or go right. hire these guys who are good at their I, shit. I tell people that that like when I take them on as a client, whatever, that I can help you with whatever little knowledge I have. Yeah, I can give you macros. Stuff. Yeah, I, I might know I, I know more than your fucking high school gym coach. Yeah. But I would never pretend to be like an expert on the subject or that I could like whatever. Like I always tell people, it's like if you want, if, if this is a specific avenue that you need help in, then you should get somebody for yeah, that. Yeah, I have, yeah. I know I've given, di- I've done diets for people like, and I must have, I'm not gonna lie, I've probably done over 100 different diets for different people and, and some have great success and some just like, no man, I didn't cheat this week. Yeah. Well, you're, you should be in a perfect deficit. Like you should have lost three pounds. Yeah, I somehow gained seven, <laughs> but I didn't cheat. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> something is not yeah. okay uh you know the best whatever and i'm gonna call it my buddy mike out in florida so the best here is we were dieting for something i don't maybe it was, it was getting ready for his kayak race i think it was and uh he's like no i'm not cheating my diet and this and that and uh and he sends us so he's out camping with his wife and he sends us a picture like a selfie hey we're having a great time out here and I didn't catch it first, but he sent it in our group chat. And someone zoomed in the picture, and there is a full <laughs> empty box of celebration cookies burning <laughs> in the fire <laughs> when he took the picture. So he must have just thrown the box there, Son and you can still bitch. see it. And I'm like, Mike, you bastard. I can see the cookies. See, my, Mike would actually be one of the easier ones, I think, to coach <laughs> because you would say – because he would you would be like, that. okay, well, I, I gained weight, and I don't know why. It's like, Mike, you can lie to me, but you know you can't lie to? You can't. <laughs> Can't lie to God. The big yeah, guy. He he's, wa- he's watching. He knows. Uh, and oh, that's, if, that, if that doesn't set him straight, then he's not good. Then he's he's not uh, he's not the man of faith that we thought he once was. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny because I was talking to our buddy, uh, my buddy Chief Richard Imman there. Check mm. him out on uh, Spotify. He's got great music. Richard Imman music, by the way. And he messaged me this morning. He's like, you know what? The only reason I list he lists our podcast every week. Mm. The only reason I list your podcast. And I was like, Bertie's like, because it just reminds me of our. Rides because I used to take him to work with me every day. He worked for me. Mm. Was, of our rides into work every day, right? <laughs> Just the, the banter, the bullshit, the stories. Yep. He messed me up this morning at six in the morning. He, he always messed me at five three in the morning. Ready? Hey, how's your morning? We just chat. And he's like, man, I just miss talking to you. So I listen to the podcast just because it reminds me of our drives to work. He, he, just, he talks back to it and stuff. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just arguing with it, eh? <laughs> and all the the other guys' lines that keep dropping in the podcast. He picks them up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um. So we uh, to get a, away from our, our local stuff here a little bit. Um. Over on uh, well, over. are we hitting? Let's quickly shout out to our sponsors. Let's do it. Jeremy Weins Realtor. Yep, is that what it is? Yep, 
realtor. We it's it's been what twenty episodes, thirty episodes. Uh, Sixty-eight. We... <laughs> no. My wife pee pee slapped me the other day too. Uh, are you retarded? Like, can you not get this right? <laughs> Holy shit! Short answer, right? yes, but fuck, yeah. Sorry, Danielle. Like, oh <laughs> man, yeah. Jeremy <laughs> Weens, realtor. Yeah. We know that now, once and for all, forever. We'll never get that wrong again. Never, never. ever. If you need somebody who's there to help you, to be with you on your side when you're buying, selling, consulting, you just need information on what's on what the steps are to, to even getting started in the process yep. of buying and selling, this is your guy to talk to. Um, we, we talked about this before, that he's, he's very much a member of our community. He's a member of our scene. He helps out. He volunteers at competitions. Yep. He brings his kids as slave labor to competitions. He's, he's volunteering at Winkler. He's volunteering at Winkler. He's, yeah. he's a guy who, who truly wants to see Manitoba Strongman uh, grow and excel and succeed. So if you need something in the world of real touring, real. Well, you could say the world of realty. Okay. Talk to okay. Jeremy Weens, realtor. Talk to Jeremy Weens, realtor. Yes. Yeah. I know he had, I talked to him. Yes. Well, we, we talk almost every day just because we have some business times. And, and uh, he listed a place this weekend. And he sold it in 24 hours. Sold it within 24 hours, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. You can't do that. You I can't. couldn't do that. So why would you even try it? Talk I, to Jeremy Weens instead. You can't even function for 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, I've not Which done... will roll in rated our second sponsor, not being able to function properly because of my lack of recovery. Crystal Penner with the Beamer. The Beamer. Uh, shout out to some of our uh, listeners last week. Gave her some follows on the Beamer Manitoba yeah, thanks, page. Thanks for doing that, guys. That means um, a lot. She actually came to me at the gym and said, hey, I got some follows from, and she showed me who it was. And I'm like, yeah, those are those are active athletes in the scene in, in Canada. Tremendous. Um, so, rehab, you know, to recap on the Beamer from last week, um, base recovery increases microcirculation in the whole body. I should bring it down if you to try, actually. Sure. Um, we're actually using it with uh, Morgan on her arthritis. Oh, okay. Interesting. Um, to get the inflammation. So, we're trying to work with that. So, we'll see how that's going to turn out mm-hmm. um, just because she's still dealing with arthritis. Um, but uh, like I said, like I've used it on my dog and it worked on, on Nova. And that's the point that I'm going to make here is that <laughs> if this is something that's good enough for Devin's bulldog, it's certainly good enough for your ass. Yeah. Because Devin's bulldog is an absolute treasure. And I and, would, and I'm not sure that you are. Yeah. You might be, but I'm not sure that you are. Like so. if you and my dog were both in a fire yeah. <laughs> and I had water, yeah. I would give it to Nova to drink. <laughs> 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 I uh, yeah I uh, there's there's no there's no doubt in, in in my mind that Nova would take priority over most of our lives uh, to Devin and that's but, so that's but that's saying something that he yeah. trusts this this product with so his dog. look it up um, do your research on it it is it, it is a, a class two uh, in Canada health it, it's approved in hospitals all over Europe yeah. which I don't know why it seems they're always a little bit ahead of us in there Europeans are smarter than us do you know what I mean all the good shit comes from there in terms yeah. of even even German engineering with in construction we mm-hmm. get a lot of products out there and they're, they're way more advanced than, than ours I don't know why we're so far behind um, Western medicine sometimes a bit of a humdinger mm. uh, but look it up contact Crystal Panner Beamer Manitoba look up do your research on it. I'm telling you guys it does work I use it it, it is a little pricey but uh, what's the price of health right it's, if this is something that you like People are gonna spend a lot of money on uh, on a lot of things in their in their in their strongman stuff for recovery and stuff like that. Uh, skip the ice bath, skip that other stuff, and, and try something that's you got a testament to what how it works. Um, that's at Beamer Beamer Manitoba at Beamer Manitoba B E E no B E M E R. Dude, I know I, I was confused at you. I'm like, how do you spell this damn thing? Uh, look it up. Give her a follow. Even just give her a follow and just and then and ask her some questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, see if she can uh, back up what she's selling. Crystal Penner. Yep. Um, so over the weekend on Saturday, there was uh, a little competition in London, England called the Strongman Classic put on by Giants Live. And we had one, the only Canadian competitor we give a shit about, Mitchell Hooper compete. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the number one in all of our hearts. Um, our favorite Canadian competitor, <laughs> Mitch Hooper. Uh, I actually like him. Just kidding. He's yeah. a dink. Uh, <laughs> we got, we got. Uh, he got famous before our podcast. We don't give a shit about him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, no, we had uh, no. We we love Mitchell. Think Hooper. of where he would be if he came to this podcast. Yeah, he would be. He would be an even better world strongest. He man. would get at least six more follows. He'd be even. He'd be. He'd win more competitions. Magnus even. would finally know who he is. <laughs> We've heard of him before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, our our boy Tristan Hoth, made his way over to his first ever Giants live. Um, we were. Uh, it's. It was just very surreal. I just. I. I, when, when they had their entrances, and it's like, it's like okay, there's uh, Alexei Novikov, there's Evan yeah. Singleton. Kordiaka. Yeah, Kordiaka. Yeah. And then there's our, our Tom boy. Tom Stoltman. Yeah, yeah. And our boy, Tristan Holt, comes walking out there with his Canadian flag. It was uh, it was really, really fun. Like, I, I just, I, I, it was thrilling to watch. And well, I, it's, I, not, it's, not, it's, it's a proud moment. Absolutely. It's a local guy. 
Local to us. Local to us. Yeah. Um, a, a, a blue collar dude, yeah. uh, police officer, like great, phenomenal guy doing yeah. the job that really none of us want to do. No, absolutely. Um, and then he had that amazing showing at WSM, which which lots of the critics and lots of the people in the in, in the in the in the scene, maybe not us local guys because we, we we know his talent. We know. are like that's ah, a fluke. Because how many times have guys had that where you, you see him on sure. the podium or not the podium, you see him in the finals, they get to worlds and then they disappear, they burn out a little bit. Yeah, yeah and uh, you know it, it was just a great day yep. for that person, and they never see him again. And Tristan solidified the fact that he belongs. Sure, absolutely, and I and I think that that's that's. This like th- he has a, f- a few big opportunities coming up. Whether it's this one and strongest man on earth, um, I don't think it's very crazy at all that we see him potentially at the Rogue. I don't think it's very crazy at all to think about seeing him at uh, the Arnold's next year. And so this is going to be kind of his his world tour here, where it's going to be very important that he just does well. He just has, and, and which is which he's very capable of doing. He's shown that twice in if a row. He can now. stay mid pack, sure. Even mid pack is. Sure. I mean, he has potential of obviously doing well. If he can stay mid pack for a couple of shows or all straight together, you know, hopefully stay injury free and everything yeah. else, yeah, he will be invited absolutely to those shows. You will see him. I believe you would see him at the Arnold. Yeah, you could. You'll see him at the Rogue. You'll see him yeah. at these shows that that guys like guys like you dream of getting to one day, sure. right? Like, absolutely. and you're, and you're yeah. working towards. And he's and he's so he's he's doing these shows. He's he's doing well, and and uh, it's yeah, it's not it's not crazy to think that he could be starting to be a very normal face on some of these bigger shows. Um, and it's it's funny because we see things like say um, like Eddie Williams, who from all accounts, seems to be a very good guy, obviously. Blah, Great blah, voice. Blah, all, all that shit. Great voice. Yeah, handsome fella. Um, so when he got his pick for Worlds, I was kind of like, what? Like, Eddie Williams? Like, he just yeah. doesn't, he just doesn't, he's a, he's a, a world, he's a very, very high competitor, but in my mind, he just wasn't one of those best in the world guys. And then he had an awesome showing yeah. at, at Worlds, and he made it to the finals, and he had a good showing, and he might be a better example of what you're talking about because he's the Australian. Guy. He's the Australian. Yeah, guy. so he was one singing it. Yes, he's he's the he. I think he did like Australia's Got Talent or something. That was like no, that, he that was, was his, but he was singing at the show. He sings at all the shows because that was like his original. Oh, thing. that's like, why. Yeah, 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 oh, because yeah. I'm like, man, the guy's actually got a great voice. Yeah, yeah. But he, um, but he, you know, he's an example of a guy where it's like he had a great showing at Worlds, and maybe it was a bit of a fluke because he went back to kind of what he don't normally does. Like he got he got last on this show. I, I believe he got last, or maybe Gavin Bilton did. But he he just shows that he's he. Those that one off really really great performance can happen. Yeah. So it's it's really important to see the like it's that's why the show was so important to see that that wasn't the case for Tristan. Yeah. Because even like Colin Bryce said in an interview beforehand, do we find out if this is if this was a fluke for for Tristan and and we know now that it's not. Yeah. All all of Western Canada knew that it wasn't a fluke and now the rest of the world knows too. Um. And we we saw a lot of new faces in this one too. Like we saw Andrew Flynn, uh, Flynn who was a, a 105 guy who recently went up into the Open Division, which is. Uh, Crazy, which is a, a, a huge thing to do. We saw like Camby do that before, to not a ton of success, yeah, um, yet at least. And um, uh, there's nothing to do. Uh, Kane Francis, who both did England's Strongest Man recently, both had great showings in there. But Andy Flynn was the guy who kind of was like shocking because it was like I think a lot of people were kind of be like, should he really be on this show, or whatever? And he really did hang though. He did yeah. he did a good job, and he was he was fun to watch and good personality, all that stuff. Um, and then we talk about, say, like the top guys who were on the show. Um, we got like Singleton, Kordiaka, Stoltman, Hooper, uh, Novikov, uh, Matt Rag, who's becoming a very big star in the sport. Dude, he did, he did He's well. He's a fucking monster. Unreal. Uh, Evan Singleton. His stone run was impressive. Yes. Yeah. These are all guys who are. Singleton. Who, He's a guy that. He's always right there. Yeah. But he can't. He gets hurt, all, he gets hurt here and yeah, there. And, 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 and at very inopportune times. Um, do you think it's his training? St- I mean, I, uh, yeah, I, I think his training yeah. style. Yeah. He's so aggressive. Yeah, and uh, and I, and I think and you need to be, but I think there's a there's a there's a point where I think when you're over aggressive and not controlled enough, certain movements, yeah, small minor mistakes yeah. happen. And when you're at that level where you're pushing those weights at the body's already, yeah, it just uh, he's a, he's a very angry lifter. Yeah, um, you'll see like in his me- like his like training videos, he's doing the kind of goofy shit like hitting his head against stuff. Yeah. and what uh, you know, I'm not a fan of that stuff. It's like whatever. But he is obviously insanely strong, so I'll just say that before I say anything else. He's technically very poor. A lot of his lifts are, are really like not technically sound, yeah. and I think that he could do a lot more to him by uh, fixing some of those things. Um, well, when I, when I look at him lift, even in the – like, this guy's top 10 in the world. Yeah. So, like, take that from a He's guy who's an world. amateur. Top yeah. three in the world. Or top yeah. three in the world. Yeah, yeah like – but you look at him going – um, and a lot of those movements, like if you watch, if you watch Tom Stoltman, you watch Hooper's last comp, yeah. everything's very calculated. It's like a piston. Yeah. Like it's up, down. It, it's yeah. they've got that that technique. Where I think Singleton's still very wild. Yeah. Like yeah, he just yeah. he's got yeah. such brute strength, and he just he's wild. And then under certain movements, he looks a bit like Bambi on ice. Sure. And yeah. I think once he hones that in, that technique, 
yeah. and drills that. Yeah, I think so too. I, th- I think I think th- there's a chance he could be the guy. Especially when we're talking in- about a show that had Kordiaka, Novikov, um, yeah. uh, and Andrew Flynn was really technical too. But these were guys where it's like them being insanely clean with their techniques often proved to be more important than being like super super yeah. strong. Yeah. Um, and in the the first case we'll go to is the, is the Max Axel press. Also, I uh, I really can't like I can't cheer for Evan Singleton because I will never I'll be long cold dead in the ground before I cheer for someone with a fucking chin strap. I just won't do it. So <laughs> I won't do it. Um, but uh, Pavel Kordiaka, just like he he didn't he didn't win the Max Axel press. But fuck, did he put on a show? But with to him, miss though. and come back and hit? Yeah, I love seeing it's that. It's disgusting. His, his split jerk technique. You know, a lot of the old school guys, like a like I know McDowell would not have. He, he would have no. thought that was quite lame to see yeah. a, to see a split jerk. And I and I get it. I understand that the old school kind of aspect of it is you want it. You see guys like uh, Kaz and these dudes hitting fucking big push presses. Some of them barely hitting push presses, just hitting strict presses almost. Yeah. And you kind of want to see that. But fuck, we're trying to put up the heaviest weight that we can. So you got to do what you got to do. But I did love seeing Kordiaka. He hits that uh, the the one ninety five. I think it was maybe it was the one eighty five. I think actually. But he hits it and he goes up on one foot and and stands yeah. with it and it's just like it's. I, I like that kind of showmanship. I like that because he's not a guy who who does that a ton. He's a he's a very interesting athlete in that he's not like uh you know he doesn't look like Evan Singleton. He doesn't look like Tom Stoll. He's not. He's not. He's ma- He's not massive in the size in, of the guys he's competing sport. against. Yeah. When he when he's in a lineup against these guys, he doesn't look like a giant uh, no. amongst giants. But he is a huge dude. But he's very athletic. He's very fast. He's like he reminds me of Novikov in a lot of ways, where he's yep. super super technical. Uh, they're both Ukrainians, so maybe that's something to do with the the training style there. Um, and when but, you look at these guys next to you, go back even five years, and you look at Thor, because we're Tom Sopman for a size. Yeah. Uh, Brian Shaw, yeah. like guys like that size, yeah. holy shit! Now it's like the sports changing back to more Absolutely. athletic, Absolutely. and it did that years ago. It was Big Z at his biggest, right? And you had these, you had Maurice Pusnowski shredded, yeah, and these small guys winning, and then it yeah. went to like the big mass monsters, or, and then it goes kind of back. It seems to go in phases. Even earlier, our boy Magnus, yeah, like he was not a big guy, he was not in, a big in, in terms of the sport, yeah. and he was, and he was a guy who, who was just extremely athletic and fast and strong. It's and like he, his ebbs and flows in the body composition yeah. of the guys who are winning. I think so too. Yeah, and. uh so we, we saw Kordiaka take third in that one. Uh, our boy T got tied for fifth with a lot of the names. That's m- what most of the guys got. Yeah. Um, and, and, and he was the only one who got zero, right? Yes. And, yeah. and, and I, think that, I think that, like, uh, that was my prediction is that T would get the first one. Yeah. Um, probably sh- maybe get the second one, but it would be very, very hard. And, I, and it was uh, his axle is something that he has to work on a little bit. In, yeah. For, I mean, at this level, like, we're talking about fucking crazy numbers. So don't, like, yeah. I'm not, you know, yeah. trying to sell that short yeah, In fact, all. he missed a four. 420 yeah, axle. Yeah, like get the fuck out of here, Tristan. Work, yeah, yeah, yeah get, get get back to work. <laughs> so, but like it's that's that's kind of where I had him on that one. So, um, we had Pavel Kordiaka and Stoltman both got 195. Uh, what what would a, a pressing competition be without some controversy with Mitch Hooper? Uh, so he loads up the record to 218. Um, uh, doesn't get it. Misses it. Misses it. Goes up to the microphone with with uh, I, I, I forget the gentleman's name who does their MCing, but. Uh, says, give me a few minutes, I'm going to hit that. Goes away. Comes back. Hits the record where it's like, sure, okay, you hit the record. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, like, it's, it, there, it's There's a ref for there. Like, sure, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with that. Although, if you're okay with that, it really, and if you're okay with that and not okay with Thor's deadlift, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's yeah. fucking weird, but yep. whatever. Um, but it was, not only did they give him the, the, the record, they gave him the fucking points. They gave him the points when he, when he walked away, took a few minutes, and came back. Now, I understand that on the graphic and in the rules it said no time limit, but how literally can we take that? Is that upset on there? Yeah, it said no time limit. So if he if he misses it and he says, "Well, I, I need a few weeks to prep on this," there's no time limit, right? Yeah, so I, like, yeah. like I was, was kind of shocked. Yeah, I, I I just I didn't care for that. I thought if if you walk away and you and you can't get it, like if you if you come back and get it, sure, you've hit the world record, no problem. But that's got to be called outside of competition at that point. It should be. Yeah, and, it I, should and, be. I, and I I just didn't I just fuck. Like, I think no time limit means on the platform. Right, you yeah, leave the yeah, you, you, you leave the, the platform. There, that's, you, I, you can't go and hammer the old lady in the back and come back yeah. and be like, "Yeah, I just need to I'm, I'm recharge." No, yeah, yeah, I feel yeah, great. No. Like, I, I think I think that that's a good way to put it. Is that once you leave that platform, obviously your turn is over. Um, but you know, either way, he hit he did hit the world record. Um, yeah, he, not taking that away from that. No, was, no, and that's the thing is that however I may feel about like, I think that he's a bit of a dink, but I I we are definitely on our way to calling him uh, the best strong man of all time. Uh, if, I, I if, believe if, if we're not already there, and I, I and, and people will be hesitant to do that because you know everyone, 
you know, obviously it's very hard to unseat someone like Big Z yeah. or whatever. But like Magnus guys, Brian Shaw guys who have done sure, four. Brian Shaw. Like these are yeah. these are guys that you don't you you can't just willy nilly throw around the term best of all time when we've had such amazing guys like that. But man, if he keeps racking up wins the way that he is, well, record, to come in from the way he is, and in, in a short time, yeah, and it's yeah, yeah it's, he's it's, it's very hard to, to say that he love him or hate him, he's got he's a hell of an athlete. Yeah, very hard to say that he's not the best of all time. That's 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 just the fact of it. Um, so we followed that one up with the axle deadlift. Uh, Tristan did well in this one. He got fourth overall, five reps. Five, dude, I was yeah, and he yeah. grinded that fifth yeah. one out. Yeah, yeah. it was, a, it, and <laughs> they they barely caught it on camera. But uh, going head I, to head with Novikov. Yes. Okay, yeah. So question here: World's strongest man, no deadlift suits. I th- think that's the case. Right? Am I correct? I think. No. Uh, I don't know. But it, it, it makes Giants me, it, live. It makes me question that because if they allow a Giants live, they probably do allow the world's strongest. Man. Yeah. So why can't Strom and Corporal deadlift suits? It just takes too much time, probably. Like you know what I mean? Because <laughs> just because if we have a hundred AMs doing fucking deadlift suits, it'll be, we'll be there all fucking day. Because you, you you qualify, you win nationals, you go pro. Yeah. Does uh, circuit nope. deadlift suits? No, nope. so that's sort of that's sort of a hole in the in the in the chain. Right, uh, that's no obviously and that's JF's decision. He he just doesn't like suits. I don't think. I was just okay because he, uh, and no, he's pulled over a thousand pounds without a damn right. suit. And what I, a disgusting to, human being. To be honest with you, I would <laughs> I would really like to see strongman move towards not using suits. Okay, yeah. I think that if we just all agree, okay, this isn't really part of it anymore. Like like big laws, I think posted that recently. And I was like, yes, if more guys like him who have that sort of sway and that's leave sort of it clout, for for equipped powerlifting. Sure. And I just I, I just I just think that like maybe it's because I'm not good at it. Like I'm not good with the suit. But I just I just think that if we just agree that just no one's using them anymore. No suits and no board, sumo and strawman, I'd be okay with that. Yeah, like it's just it's just it's just I, I really wouldn't have an issue with that. And I and I would like to do I'd you, actually like to do see that. Do you think that, Hooper but. sent Lucas Hatton a message after doing the axle press and saying, Look, I didn't have sleeves in my elbows? <laughs> maybe I don't know. I, but and it's funny because now I I, like, <laughs> I was wondering that he has he has he has such an ugly fucking split jerk mm-hmm. that if he can really if he spent some time with someone to teach him how to do that properly like man he could push that record over to a really really untouchable number yep. and, and speaking of that Axel uh, Iron Baby had to bail uh, last minute on the competition um, he's got to be getting close to the the end of those invites well he like he's it's just too many times short notice yeah. and cancellations and pulling out and and whatever else and not doing competition and and, then, and yeah only doing one event not yeah, doing the rest yeah. and I think he's got to be getting pretty close to the, the, was there the, a reason he pulled out his his mother is sick and oh. that's and that's whatever but yes. you know it's it, it's it's you know if you if you have an employee who calls in sick sick ten days in a row and then on the tenth time they're like but my mom is sick you'd be like I really wish you hadn't called in those nine fucking times earlier you know what yeah. I mean like it's just that's all I'm gonna say currently dealing with that yeah. <laughs> Um, Hooper took the took the axle deadlift with eight reps, followed by Matt Rag with seven, Tom Stolen with six, and then our boy T Tristan five. Going head to head with Novikov. Yeah, and and yeah, you want to talk about like having a guy next to you that's going to push you on a deadlift like fucking Novikov, just a great deadlifter, great for reps too, great with his uses his suit like a fucking master. Yeah, that orange suit that he's got that just like just crushes with it. Um, four reps was like the way to was like the you ha- like for Tristan to get five that was huge points because yeah. everyone got four or less. Yeah. So uh, that was awesome to see. Great job on that. Tristan's really showing. Uh, from between World's Strongest Man and this one, uh, one of the better deadlifters in the world. Yeah. And that's awesome. Love, love seeing that because who doesn't love a good fucking deadlift? Um, the Conan's Wheel, uh, exactly what I how I thought this would go, honestly. Uh, Kordiaka just took it for a fucking run. Yeah. Like, just like he, he he moved like he was carrying just like groceries. Like, it, yep. was, it was unbelievable to see how fast he went. Uh, Hooper had a good run. Just wanted to beat uh, Tom. Knew he wasn't going to get Kordiak on that one. Knew he yeah. didn't really need to. Save some energy. Yeah, the points weren't really necessary. I I, I do like that. I like seeing guys um, be strategic and and conservative when they when they can be. I I, I do like seeing that. Um, Stoltman uh, and Tristan both tied, which I think is bullshit. Yeah. Uh, they both tied with 826 degrees to the degree. Yeah. That. Yeah. Come on. When we're talking degrees, Come on. guys. Yeah. Come on, man! Like, <laughs> there's no fucking way. I'm not buying that. I'm sorry. I'm not fucking buying that. Yes, yeah. somebody, somebody got further. How big? How big is the circle on that thing? What? What? what 100 foot radius on there? Yeah. You know, so every, you know, two inch or three inches no. per degree. Yeah. And they got the exact. No, not Come buying on. it. Not buying it. And uh, and if I if I were to take a wild stab out of whether it's Tristan Hoth or Tom Stolman that they'd want to push that a little bit further, I think I know who I'm picking. So I I think that Tristan got that one. So. 
Congratulations, Tristan. My conspiracy brain says that you won yeah. that one, or you got third in that one. <laughs> um, but uh, Tristan did really well in that one too. He did what he did well at Worlds in that one. Yeah. Um, proving that he's good at like the dumb dumb ones where it's just like brain off and just go. Yeah. Um, which is uh, awesome. And he looked. Tristan looked smooth. And then that last quarter turn or half turn, you could just see the just, the, he, the he body breaking. Yeah, his, yeah, you yeah. could see his his steps, his legs started just yeah. Out, and then you knew it was down. Like, yeah. yeah, but he did he did awesome in that one. It was really fun to watch. I I, I like a good a good Cohen's wheel. I like doing them too, actually. Like, yeah, and we're just have one in provincials. So hopefully, you guys were watching that one, taking some notes. Uh, the wrecking ball hold, fucking heartbreaker here. Yeah, heartbreaker because we were watching it and and Thrones and me were watching it with Dan. And Thrones was like, okay, so he was working it out, trying to see how Tristan get on the podium. He's like, if yeah. he, and we we just kind of figured this was a the lock. breaker. Yeah, we're like, this is a, this okay? So if he could do this one, blah 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 blah, he'll do well in the wrecking ball, and then whatever. And it just wasn't. I think it was too specific. Yeah. I think this this implement was too specific. Well, he looked like I just watched it two hours ago. Yeah, um, he looked steady, controlled, yeah. calm as a cucumber. Yeah, Tom is mid seizure. I, I couldn't believe like, that. His body, legs, I couldn't knee, believe knees it. are shaking like the old and lady. And he held it for like, an eight, like eight seconds longer than Tristan, too. And just Tristan was just like, fine. And then, boop, his hand Tristan looked, off. even looked over at him for a bit. And yeah. I'm like, oh, like, and just calm. And all of a sudden, boom. And I'm like, oh. So for anybody who's not aware, Tristan has like a world-class grip. Like he's yeah. got one of the one of the best grips in the world. 600 quite, some pound quite, quite double overhead yeah. deadlifts. And, and he, we're, we're, we're really just, like by we, I mean Western Canada, is really just waiting for the, the right event for him to just to show that off. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he'll be in the conversation. Whenever the, whenever someone's doing a, a preview video for something, they'll say for grip stuff. Well, and I thought it was Tristan this event. Knows, and I thought so too. Yeah. Um, but I, if I were to give my uh, not-so-expert opinion on this, is that it's it's such a specific implement. They used it every year at Giants Live, so a lot of uh, most of these guys have used it before. They've experienced what that drop feels like. They experience what it feels like in the hands and wh- how to put it against your thighs properly. Yep. Um, and it's not just a purely grip event; like it has a lot to do with how you sit, set yourself up and everything, right? So, they also shortened the handles this year, so you'll notice that like yeah, for, they were very narrow. Grip. Yes. So for yep. a guy like Tristan, who has really big hands, it was barely, barely outside of his hand. Yeah. So he lost a little bit of ground with just a little slip, and his hand just popped right off. Yeah, and uh, it's it's a it's a shame. You want to you want we want to see a little bit more from that one than we want. I, I to be honest with you, I didn't think he would be entirely crazy to think of, of Tristan as, as being a world record holder in something like that. Like he's yeah. just got a great static hole grip like that. But next year he comes back, and I think that he could be much more comfortable with that specific implement, just even w- having used it one time before. Yeah. And I think that we could see a whole different outcome from that one. Uh, Hooper again taking that one, just like continuing his dominance this whole one. This just like, he's unreal in this competition. He's just calculated and smart. Yeah, he's, he's just, just he's just really really fucking good at strong man. Yeah. Um, and then the stones. So uh, just point up the stones. Uh, obviously, no no real shock that Tom Stoltman wins that one. But it's maybe just wild. But maybe a little more shocking was how close it was. Yeah. Um, Kane Francis. So uh, Tom got them all in twenty seconds, almost twenty one seconds. Kane Francis got them all in twenty five, and Matthew Wright got them all in twenty seven. Dude, I was I was shocked that they were within five seconds of Tom. Yes. That the, yeah. And uh, and then our our hometown hero here, uh, sixteen seconds after that, uh, Tristan. I think the first stone he lost all of his tape and tacky. It was all, it was all I, when he put it up. There, I'm like, what's just, all over the stone? Just nothing, nothing left at all. And and we were like, we were all having a fucking panic attack here. We're just like, yeah. no, no, like we're, like I'm, I'm waiting for him to get to that last stone. And I thought it's it's gonna fucking slip out. Like it's yep. just, it just it, it, these guys are all using tacky. How could how could Tristan not need tacky on this? And goddamn, if he isn't fucking strong enough that he just grabbed that stone and, yep. and put it up on there anyway, like he was. It was. Uh, he grabbed it like he had full tack, and, yeah, and it, was, you, it was. It was gone. There was, it was gone. It was whatever gone. was left of the he, stone from the previous competitor he saved he had, his yeah, ass. Exactly. He yeah. had that, and he had his hands, and that's yeah. what, and that's what he had. And uh, fuck, was that that was a, a a really really fun one to watch. But he was head to head with Cordiac on that one. Um, yes, that might, he, that he missed been. he missed the last stone. He had it up to the platform, and then it rolled on him. It slipped back on him. So Cordiac should have four stones to show. Kordiaka, uh, yes, he did. Yeah, yeah. you got four. Yep, Tristan right. was there cheering him on, and he had it. I'm like, oh, he's going to get it. It's going to be sweet. And he hit that platform, and then it spun, yeah. and that was – and you're not repicking that. There was, a, there was a couple guys that uh, – I think it was – I think Eddie Williams was also really close on his last one. It was just – he just – he went for that push forward yep. a little too early and then ended up just hitting the edge and sliding down. And it's just like you see those, and you're like, oh. And, like, I like Eddie Williams. Like, he's like yeah. a, he's 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 not like the, the top-level competitor, but he's – Clearly, one of the nicer guys out there, yeah. and just like a like he's like a teacher, and he's just like seems well, like a really good guy. Both guys from Australia. Uh, what's his nuts there? Uh, 
Rongo Keen. Rongo Keen. Another yeah, guy yeah. who's like seems, great seems guy. Seems like a really yeah. nice guy too. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, a couple. So as we're looking at the, the, the final standings here, so uh, yeah, I took some screenshots too, actually. Okay, so we uh, we saw Mitch, Mitch Hooper uh, sneak, uh, sneak it out over Tom Stolman with two points. Um, pretty commanding lead over Pablo next with thirty eight points. And then it it, get, it stays pretty tight until you get to about mid pack with that one. Tristan, Mister Fifth Place, yep. takes fifth again in this one after taking fifths at Worlds. Um, but like the real story though is he's two points out of third, which is crazy. Two points. Um, he's he's half a point. Sorry, a point. Uh, yeah, he's half a point out of uh, fourth with uh, with Rag. But isn't that quite the gap? It's an unreal gap between Hooper and Tom two points, and that's like. Just like a level there. That's kind of what I would have guessed. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, that's what happened. Like, those guys are just really, like, I don't know, man. Like, they're just fucking both yeah. amazingly good. But, I mean, Tristan would be two points out. It's great. It's amazing. Yeah. And 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 it's it really makes it, it really shows, again, that, like, um, the the uh, fifth place is, is absolutely great at a world-level show like that. And then to look at the score sheet and look at it even a little more carefully and be like, and he was only, and he was this far from third. He There's was this three far world strongest man winners in that, yeah, in yeah. that show, and he beat them. He, 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 beat, he, he beat, he beat one of them. Yeah, and uh, it's he's he's uh, he's showing that he's, uh, as Colin Bryce said, he's not a fluke. So go fuck yourself. Uh, he's Suck he's on my Western nuts. <laughs> yeah, he's he's no, he's he's showing that he belongs. He's showing that he's going to be uh, not a flash in the pan. No, um, and he's he. I, I think really what he just needs is, um, which is more time. He just yeah. needs more time at this level now. Yeah, where he needs a good off season. Yeah, like yeah. this this year is going to be hard on him. Yeah, like with the competition he's doing, it's, he's he's going to get beat up by yeah. the end of the year. Yeah, I think a great off season if he yeah. can get uh, and string together a great season here, mm-hmm. a couple more shows, mm-hmm. get a great you know four to six month off season if he can get that in. Yep, man, he, he has some technique stuff I'd like to see him clean up yep. a little bit. That I think would go a long way for him. Yeah, um, he like. You know, it's 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 always worth keeping in perspective. Like two years ago, he was competing. The biggest show he was doing was uh, Magnus. The two uh, two years ago was was Western. Yeah, he he, he did Westerns. Like he didn't he didn't even make CSM that year. Do you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So it's like yeah. he he it's it's the 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 growth and like the uh, the improvement that he's had has been so exponential. Yeah. That yeah, you want to talk about say like, the Magnus show? Like that was like uh, you know. Uh, his first like big international and that was fucking a year ago you yeah. know what i mean like he's yeah. it's, he's so he's so new to this whole new level of of competition and whatever and like i could you know uh maybe i'm maybe i'm i'm thinking that i'm better at reading faces than i than i actually am but he looked a little nervous to me when he did his his, his athlete intros yes he's yeah. normally a little more smiles um he was pretty stony faced in this one maybe he's maybe he's trying out a new badass persona i don't know but he, <laughs> but he, he was trying uh, to do sexy pouty on the yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they, but they did, they, they did the athletes in a in a row, and um, he just he you know gave the fucking whatever. But he 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 just wasn't like he didn't seem like him him how I know him, which is a little bit yeah. more uh, like happy to be there kind of thing. So I'm wondering if maybe it's just you know you're traveling all the way to London, you're you're standing around, and you're seeing some of the best competitors in the world that are now yeah. your competition. Well, um, there's a huge sold out crowd there for sure. It has to be the biggest crowd he's ever competed in front of. Well, a year ago we were letting him sing harmony on yeah. our podcast yeah. <laughs> with, without a mic. Yeah, I, was I sure it. I get one slapping a mic over his way. Fine, I felt yeah. like I wanted to hear Here something from him. Say something. <laughs> Man, shit. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and and you know we talk about say like the the guys who some of the other stuff to come out of this competition is a guy like Tristan or or Rag or maybe even like Andy Flynn. Kind of show themselves as like, hey, these are guys that could start being considered more in this conversation of of, uh, of guys who are like Kane Francis, who are really really good. And then also we look at guys where it's like maybe it's time for these guys to take a step back a little bit. Like when we see say like um, an Eddie Williams, a Gavin Bilton, where they're just not hanging at this level. Yeah, they're just not. And, it's and just, Gavin it, always seems he he Austin he appeared in the scene. Yes, but he's always kind of been yeah towards the bottom. And, and this is in perspective to the top guys. But he's always been just he hasn't had right. that. That great showing at a stupid right. high level show. Well, a, a lot, it, not that I can remember, anyways. But and, and that's the thing is that so like Singleton got hurt, so he's we won't call him, whatever. Like we're not going to call him last place. He got hurt. Yeah. So Gav got last, and you look, it's like it's a a, a nine point difference between him and the and the next one, um, and then that's because that's kind of where the spread drops. Like there's like, you know, thirty seven, thirty six, thirty five, thirty four, thirty three, twenty eight, twenty four, fifteen. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's, that's a pretty significant dip to take. Yeah. Um, and I think that even a guy, so so Eddie beat him by nine points, and I think that Eddie's a guy where it's, it might be worth considering whether he's should be getting these yeah. invites right now, or if he could spend a little more time away, come back with a a, a brand new yeah. look and and whatever, and see if it see if it helps him, because it's just when we when we see guys like uh, like Gav Bilton being in, in, uh, invited to these shows still, it makes it 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 makes you think about a guy who who could soundly beat him in that competition who's sitting at home. Yeah, you know, and it's and it's there's enough good guys now that we don't need to have. Uh, I get it. He's he's local to the area, kind of like he's European, whatever. Yeah, and, and all that. And that, that stuff. could have been the case. They might have had some of the names drop out, or they could. Yeah, could and I'm not saying. Be. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah who, who, but I think it's, I think it's I think it's worth considering that there's this whole new crop of guys. You know, um, I don't know if you, if you remember Andy Black. So he was a Scottish guy. Oh, okay. Who was freak show? He was huge, freak show strong. Um, this is only like a year ago, two years ago. Um, he came in, did some Giants lives. Uh, someone said that he like he started lifting like earlier that year. Like he was just like a monster, yeah, like a literal monster, fucking, like ogre that lived in Scotland. And he just once he got past like that sort of like, oh, he's very very strong. He wasn't very good, yeah. And that's what we're seeing with Gavin Bilton too. Is um, there was like, he 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 almost missed one of the stones, and then the next stone he tried to one motion it, and it's just his. He's just not that good at the sport yet. Yeah, and I'm not saying he's not strong, and I'm not saying he's not he's not like good, uh, like relative to other people. Yeah, like to lower level people, whatever. But he's not good on this level. Yeah, and so he's making mistakes like that, like technical mistakes like that. And honestly, I, after the stone run, they got a shot of his face, and I think that he knew even too that he was like, "Fuck, this was not a good day for me." It was not the show he wanted. No, and yeah. it was, and it was. It, it, I think it's just they, they have to consider that it's like maybe it's time for him to do. Uh, a different tier of shows. Maybe he does the Magnus show. Maybe yeah. he does SCL shows. Maybe he does something that's a little bit more uh, whatever. You know, you, I, like, I would compare it to a fighter who goes on a, a losing streak on UFC. Yeah. And that's like, okay, we're going to put, we're, you're, they, you're, you're not fighting for UFC anymore. Okay, I'm going to spend a little bit of time in Japan, Bellator, whatever yeah. it might be, and then I'm going to get my name back to, be, to mean something again, and then I'll make that run yeah. for UFC again. Yeah. And I think that can be done in Strongman too. Like, we, like these guys have, uh, uh, like Gavin Bilton's like, is he 30? Freaking guy looks like he's fifty. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure he's in like. His I'm late not 20s. calling out ages because <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's in his late twenties. Pretty sure the last guy I thought was eighteen was like twenty eight. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you thought you thought Wester was he was in like the teen division or something. <laughs> 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 he but but he's a guy where he's he's not old. He has a he could have a long time left in the sport if he's smart about it and everything. So just take a year, take two years to yeah. just like get better and improve at a, at a, a level that makes more sense, and yeah. then and then make your. Your uh, your return when you're when you're ready. Um, I I love giving my opinion on things that nobody asked me for. Like yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, it's <laughs> a damn lie. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's a lie. <laughs> um, so that was yeah, that was pretty oh, much that was pretty much shit. the strongman the strongman classic. It was a yeah. it was fun show to watch. It's always really high quality. Like I I it's it's part of the the, the official strongman uh, membership page that you that you get. Yeah. Um. So it's just like it's it's affordable. Like just check these shows it's out. Ten when bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Check these shows out when they have them. They're always they're always fun. We we put them on at the gym here, and uh, we gather we gather around the television and and watch our 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 dear friend Tristan compete. And it was just a blast. Um. So. Uh, on a pro level, we're looking forward next to Strongest Man on Earth. Yep. Which is only a, m- a month away. Yeah, four four weeks. Yeah, it's coming coming right up. Yeah. So these guys who were just who just did this one are already thinking about the next one, which is pretty wild. Um, really excited for that one. Really yeah. looking forward to watching that one. That's one for sure that we'll be putting on. Huge roster. Amazing roster. Yeah. I, I'm I'm hoping that there's a. I, I don't know what the deal is with the uh, the open the day before. I really hope there's a way to watch that one and the women's. I really want to watch their stuff. Yeah. Um. That's what I was being the huge roster in the open and the women's like that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot but, of But and then if we're talking about the pro roster, like the it's a fucking star studded But that open yeah. lineup, a lot of a lot of big names in the amateur side. Yes. Like well they're pros, but yep. that are that are looking for that breakout Absolutely. showing. Yep. Yep. And this will be a show to get it. Yeah. Some of the guys that I like there's you know, Jeffers and yep. uh Josh Burgeon who we we met at, at the Arnold's the, there and stuff. Room and, twins. Are they going? I don't believe that they are. Oh, okay. no, no, but we, but there's, there's a lot of guys that are going to be. This is going to be a, a big opportunity for them to either break through or start digging that or punching that hole through. You know yeah. what I mean? Like to get to get so that they're on those on those big shows next year or the year after that. And uh, I'm really looking forward to watching those. Well, I'm speaking of French guys, shout out to our biggest fan and cutest fan. David Nolay. Oh, David Nolay. His yes. birthday Bonifat, was Dave his Nolay. birthday was yesterday. Um, Forty years young, Dave unreal. Nolay. 
entering the strongman masters division uh, realm. Uh, yes, happy birthday, Dave. We're very looking at making effect. A massive <laughs> effect on arthritis and Ben Gay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're, you're the man, Dave. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna send. I should send him some Watkins oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, this Saturday we have Nathan Payton. Uh, it's it's not too late to sign up. I mean, it might nope. be, I guess it'll be too late when you hear this, but no, it's not. No, hell, it's not. You if, you, if, you, if you hear this at six in the morning, get your ass down. You show there. up with eighty bucks, I'll let you in the door. Absolutely. Um, so we got that coming up on. You show up with seventy bucks and a box of Krispy Kremes, so I'll probably let you in the there door. You go. Hey, that's that's a good deal. <laughs> I have no idea what, what Krispy Kreme costs. So, um, we're gonna do either. on August third. We have the Magnus a dozen, Classic not qualifier. Six. A dozen, <laughs> yeah, no, not six. <laughs> the Magnus Classic qualifier in Gimli, Manitoba. Yep. Uh, come down, check it out. It's gonna be a really, really great time. I'm really looking forward to that one. Lots of fun, lots of sunshine, lots of Icelandic people like your boy sunshine. here. Sunshine. Um, we got uh, August tenth. In yep. Winkler, we have provincials. We make uh, Str- Manitoba Strongman makes its much anticipated return to uh, the Harvest Fest in Winkler. Very much looking forward to that. We're gonna, you know, there there used to be Dom and Kyle Rayner and and Dave Osland, and now we have Luke Scarrup and yeah, Joel Derricks, yeah, uh, freaking uh, Martin and Deloli. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, it's gonna be awesome. We're really looking forward to that one. But it's gonna be uh, to to figure out who's going to nationals for Manitoba. Um, we're very, very excited to see how that turns out. And we're very, very excited to see how our, especially how our new people do, uh, at their first provincials. I'm, really, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, at the, uh, what was that put us in June, July, August, September, September deadlift for dreams. Let's see where we're at here with this one here. Um, we are, Drum roll. we're still, we're still that. nice and far. I should have done that. My bad. I, I, I always forget to pull it up when I'm, we have Ole. so much time to do it. Ole. It was just a moment of silence. Just here. dead air. Yeah, we just you tell we're actually pretty good at this stuff. A little bit of dead air. Okay, so as of right now, holy smokes, we are at twenty nine percent of what we're trying to raise. And that puts us at seventeen thousand five hundred and forty four dollars and sixty nine cents. Unreal, unreal. And we still have fifty one days. I haven't even started. I haven't raised a dime yet. So I, that's that'll be uh, on my list of things to do soon. Um, but that's September, the date of it, uh-oh, 13th, 13th, <laughs> shit, September 13th, Deadlift for Dreams, one of the biggest, that's event. wrong too, cockballs, September 14th, September 14th, um, one of the, one of the most anticipated dates on the Manitoba strength sport calendar, uh, ra- looking to raise $60,000. For families in Manitoba who just really need it. I'm who holding could, the damn. Who, who damn could, it. <laughs> September 7th, 2024. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That's it for holy, sure. For, holy shit. I almost lost my uh, life there. Uh, I thought you were going there. Holy crap. September 7th, ladies so, and gentlemen. Man, that is the official yeah. date. There's no, there's, that's it. According to the website. Uh, so we're looking, we're looking forward to that one. It's going to be a lot of money raised, a lot of fun. Um, if you're not thinking about lifting, you better be thinking about coming down and hanging out and checking it out because there's always big lifts coming on. Um, I want to do, uh, I think next week would be a good time to do it. I want to do like a little preview of some of like the big dead lifters, lifters in Manitoba and what we can kind of be looking See what for. Kind of numbers? Yeah, yeah, because we, <laughs> Thrones is one to point out that when Pat pulled 800, we did a whole episode about it. And now like three guys have pulled 800 and we haven't even talked it's about it. It's old news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we got to. Somebody's got to pull 900. Yeah. We, and uh, Who yeah. do you think would be the first 900 deadlift in Manitoba? Is there, has there ever been one? Uh, so Did Downs do ben it? Ben Downs has unofficially pulled 900 oh, in, yeah. uh, in his garage, I think. Yeah. Um, which is fucking crazy. Just, yeah. uh, I think that Thrones will be the first person to do it. You think so? I do think so. Yep. Yep. I think oh. that he's, uh, he. Uh, well, I, I I actually do want to make this into a fun little episode, so we'll talk about this next time. But yeah, he's he's, time. Been, he's been doing some shit in here that uh, uh, it's blowing my fucking mind. Cocaine? Yeah, no, no. He's he's a, oh. he's he's a drug. He's I thought a, that a, a drug free athlete. I thought the pun and blow was no, cocaine. No, drug free athlete. He uh, yeah, that's some bullshit. <laughs> he's drug free and beat my deadlift by two hundred pounds. <laughs> Just pissed. Isn't that oh, isn't that frustrating? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. We got uh, we got that. Um, At least I can all bench them. September, October, October will, will be uh, uh, provincials or sorry, also, nationals going on in Moncton. Speaking of out benching, you just got thrown in there. Suck it, Pat. Oh yeah, the, the dumbbell thing you tried beating me. The very the very very intelligent dumbbell thing that you're doing with a torn pack. <laughs> Winning's winning, Tyler. That's all. That's all yeah. I'll say on that. You told uh, me I was weak and I'm not strong anymore, and I'm like, you know, I'm not sure these. I saw pieces. I saw Pat fail a fucking. I, you know, weak and gay. You got to be to fail a dumbbell press. Yeah, Pat. That's how weak. <laughs> uh, and then to have the other guy sit in front of you make funny while you're doing it. 
dumbbell press. <laughs> what a loser. Uh, Who even does that? So then we got um, October will be nationals in, yeah. in Moncton. Not Nothing to do with the local guys here unless you're heading out that way. Um, October or November? November. November 9th. I'm waiting for my poster. Hopefully we'll have it by Saturday. Uh, the first ever Manitoba Grip Sports competition will be held right here at Iron Age. We're calling it Iron Claw. Um, it's going to be refereed by... The Claw! That's fucking right. Jim it's Carrey? Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be refereed by uh, National Grip Sport champion, uh, James Jeffers. He's going to come out and basically teach us how to run a competition, a grip sport competition, so that'll be grip. nice. Really looking forward to that. Any and all experience levels, please, guys. Like, I, I really urge you. Like, I, I'm going to try to get my dad to do it. I'm going to try to get everybody to come out and just give it a shot. Because why the fuck you not? You actually try right? your dad to do it? Yeah, I'm going to see if he wants to. Yeah, yeah. He's got he's got those old electrician hands, you know what I mean? Like, big yep. forearms and stuff. So I think, I think that he could do all just right. Just wins. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what I think. I think that if we get, like, some trades people in here doing this shit. You know what? I'm going to reach out to the, the arm wrestling crew. Yes, absolutely. Because that's yeah. what they train. It's and a like, lot of grip. Yeah, uh, the, the heavy games guys, like these, these are guys that I, I want to see all these people down here. And I think that somebody that is not in the strongman group or powerlifting is going to win this one. You I know, think, I think I, it, I, it, should, you should do like a little rivalry of you have the arm the wrestling cruise. group, oh, cruise, oh, that's cool. the, the match with a heavy, like yes. the, the the strongman guys, the powerlifters, the bodybuilders, and just see. see the bodybuilders? Can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good luck, bodybuilders. We'll they'll see just, you guys doing that they'll one. They'll just bring their straps and go thumbless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love to see that. Uh, uh, that's so that's coming up. It's gonna be really fun. We're gonna we're gonna have some cool stuff for that one, some prizes and shit. Um, and then a little later in that month, it's not. It hasn't been um, fully like I haven't paid the sanctioning fee yet and stuff. But um, if you if you have a WRPF membership, don't throw it away because we're gonna have something with that coming yep. up. Yep. Um, and then if we're looking even further into the future of 2025. Uh, if you live uh, in the Interlake, if you live in the Interlake, <laughs> something cool coming your way uh, with with our, our friends from up there. So so keep that in mind. Um, it might be Ultra Lake, but it's around Interlake. <laughs> it's a, a really crappy part of Manitoba, but we're going to be doing something cool there. Yeah. Um, if you uh, <laughs> if <laughs> Uh, if you're if you're training for provincials, train hard, guys. If you want to come in down this Saturday, I'll see you there. Um, and Devin, if you have anything more to add, Just remember, guys, stay hard. Okay, we'll see you guys at Nathan Payton.